If you watch film analysis videos, you've probably heard quite a bit about the controversy of modern remakes. In theory, a film would be remade to get younger generations interested in the story, show how the story can be told with new technology, and clean up anything that aged poorly. From the perspective of a studio, that makes sense. You want these beloved tales to stay beloved, so let's make it again and tone down the pedophilia. The story lives on to be enjoyed by another generation, in theory. Now imagine Disney decides to remake a beloved film, Sleeping Beauty but they decide to show five minutes of close-ups of Aurora getting her hand slammed into the needle, and then the second half of the film follows how Prince Philip uses his expertise to save Aurora's life, then ditches her to go brutally murder the attacker. You're probably thinking, what the fuck? Why would they remake Sleeping Beauty just to make it more violent and more about the prince in this day and age? Well, that's what The Last House on the Left did, and this film is truly an enigma. The first and second half feel like completely different movies. The first half shows Mary trying to have fun with her friend, but getting roped into danger. Her friend is killed, and Mary is raped and presumably dead. The second half shows the criminals seeking refuge with the unknowing parents. They realize what happened, and then the narrative shifts to a hero story where the father saves his daughter, protects his wife, shoves Jesse Pinkman's hand into the garbage disposal, and becomes an Avenger. In the second half, the father is the protagonist. We barely see Mary at all. It's not like films with controversial topics and drastic character focus changes can't work. The Skin I Live In had depictions of sexual assault and a fairly confusing narrative with significant shifts, but it's still considered to be a wonderful film by many. The difference is everything in The Skin I Live In was was done for a reason. There was a purpose to those scenes. With The Last House on the left, the graphic rape scene with Mary exists mainly as a spark to ignite her father's hero arc. After putting Jesse Pinkman's hand into the garbage disposal, rather than go check on his daughter who is barely clinging to life in the other room, he has this moment with his wife, like, there is a time and a place. What the hell, dude? The father's actions in the latter half of the film reminded me of a superhero film. He clearly has a decent amount of medical knowledge, but also can fight against people who kinda fight as their job. Things just end up working out really well for him, to the point that it's ridiculous. It seems like Mary's character was significantly more shallow than in the original. That checks out with the trend of remakes. Take Mulan, for example. The songs in the original Mulan gave a lot of insight to the characters' thoughts and feelings. It contributed significantly to their characters. The remake of Mulan removed the songs but didn't properly replace the information from the songs, so all of that insight was just thrown out. With The Last House on the left, it makes the film much more gross as Mary's character is treated like nothing more but a victim to cause her father's Avenger era. Reimagining hegemony and misogyny in the contemporary slasher remake by Ryan Lazardi explains it well. Comparing the original's use of misogynistic torture to the remake of The Last House on the left, this theme is not only present but hyper-emphasized. The extreme close-up subjective shots of the daughter's rape are still present but are even more claustrophobic and singular, with the absence of any sound other than the heavy breathing of her assailant. Even the father must stab his own daughter, shown again in extreme close-up, to drain her lungs of fluid. The graphic nature of the torture and rape in the remake, as well as the extended nature of the scenes, make this an even more misogynistic film than the original. I personally believe that films should be judged in the context of their time. You don't have to agree with me on that, that's just how I do it. The the original Last House on the Left film came out during the rise of the golden era of slasher films, and these slasher films really like showing women suffering. More quantitative content analysis research conducted by James Weaver has examined the trend in horror films of treating females differently than males, stating, scenes portraying the death of female characters were significantly longer than those involving male characters. If I was told the 2009 version of The Last House on the Left, ignoring the obvious camera quality differences, was the original 1972 version, I would believe it, and I would be a bit more understanding of why the story is the way it is, because that was the trend at the time. But this was 2009, so why remake it if you're not making it more appealing to the people of the modern era? Rebooting a franchise includes the benefit of a proven economic product with an already developed template, as well as the idea that a whole new generation of money can now be brought in the door. Horror films are also a safe economic decision to make because of their relatively inexpensive production budgets and predictable box 
office draw. So arguably, the last house on the left is even more of a low-effort cash grab than something like Mulan, since at least that had a hefty budget. With how simple the sets and props for the last house on the left are, they knew this was going to be a cheap film to make. And surely the nostalgia from the fans of the original would cover up the flaws. Yeah, well, it didn't. The general people of 2009 were not so open to watching a 17-year-old girl get raped for over five minutes, just listening to her in absolute agony while we get all these different camera angles. That obviously infuriated a lot of people. And you can say what you want about younger generations being too sensitive, but it's really not unreasonable to be absolutely disgusted by this. Especially with the context of this being a film about a man written and directed by men, it comes off as really sick voyeurism. As for the fans of the original, they were upset to see a film that was a shell of its old self. This film was disturbing for all the wrong reasons. 